Hello everyone. I'm with my new video on refraction. So let's try to understand what are the lesson objectives. We'll be talking about refraction and we'll be looking at Snell's law, the critical angle and total internal reflection. Mainly this video will help you to understand how to solve numerical problems on refraction. So let's understand what is refraction. So refraction is actually the bending of light or bending of wave when it passes from one medium to another. For example, if light passes from glass to air or air to glass, it actually bends when it hits the boundary at an angle other than 90 degrees. When it passes from a rarer to a denser medium, it bends towards the normal. And when it passes from denser to rarer medium, it bends away from the normal. And in fact, this bending of light is called refraction. The change in direction of travel of the wave is because of the change in the speed of the wave in different medium. So let's try to understand this, what happens actually in refraction. So imagine you have a glass block here and this is the normal. So what is normal? The normal is the perpendicular drawn at the point of incidence. So let's say light strikes here. Now, technically light should travel straight because the property of light is it always travels in a straight line. That is what is called rectilinear propagation of light. But as light enters inside the glass, it actually slows down and it bends towards the normal as you see here. It actually bends towards the normal. And this bending of light is called a refraction. However, as it passes from glass to air, it will again pick up speed and it will again bend away from the normal. So you see again, you have the normal here and as it is going from glass to air, it again picks up speed and it bends away from the normal. So this bending of light is called refraction. When it passes from a rarer medium, that means air to glass, it bends towards the normal. And when it travels from a denser to a rarer medium, the medium outside is air, it bends away from the normal. However, this refraction only happens when light strikes the surface at an angle other than 90 degrees. If light strikes the surface at an angle 90 degrees, as you see here, no refraction occurs. So the reason why refraction occurs is because light slows down as it enters inside the denser medium and hence it bends. Again, when it moves out of glass, it picks up speed and again, it bends away from the normal. Now let's try to understand what is Snell's law. Refractive index is often used when dealing with light waves. It is defined as the ratio of speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in the medium. So that is what is refractive index. That means the speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in the medium. However, you have a lot of numerical problems on refraction and sometimes these numerical problems could be tricky. And in order to solve these numerical problems, we use Snell's law. So let's say we have a numerical problem here. Uh, let's try to understand and then we'll go over this numerical problem. So a light strikes an air. So this is the incident ray here, you see, it hits the air at an angle 46 degrees. So this angle is 46 degrees. The index of refraction for air is one. It enters inside water and the refractive index of water is 1.33. Now we don't know the angle of refraction and we are interested in finding what is the angle of refraction. That's the first part of the question. And the second part of the question is, if the situation is reversed, that means in this case, the light is traveling from water to air and they want you to calculate what is the refractive, what is the angle of refraction in air when the light is incident inside water at 46 degrees. So the same question, however, 
in the first case, the first medium is air and the second medium is water. And in the second case, the first medium is water and the second medium is air. And we'll solve this problem by using Snell's law. Now, what was Snell's law? Snell's law stated that the refractive index of first medium multiplied by sine of angle of incidence of the first medium will be equal to the refractive index of the second medium multiplied by sine of angle of refraction inside the second medium. So refractive index of first medium multiplied by the sine of angle of incidence in the first medium will be equal to the refractive index in the second medium or refractive index of the second medium multiplied by the sine of angle of refraction in the second medium. So let's try to solve this question. You have the refractive index of water is 1.33 and uh, the angle of incidence is 46 degrees. So let's try solving this question. So here I've drawn this diagram. If you look here, now here you have the first medium. You see the first medium is, is air and the refractive index of air is one. Then the second medium here you see is water. The refractive index of water is 1.33. Light strikes the water surface at an angle 46 degrees. And you are asked to calculate what is the angle of refraction. So we are going to use Snell's law, which states that the refractive index of the first medium, which is the refractive index of air, multiplied by the sine of angle of incidence in the first medium, which is sine 46, is equal to the refractive index of the second medium, the refractive index of the second medium, that is the refractive index of water, multiplied by the sine of angle of refraction in the second medium. So that is what we are looking for. So let's put this one as theta and let's write an equation. So your equation would be one, which is the refractive index of air, multiplied by sine 46, uh, which is the angle of incidence is equal to the refractive index of water, which is 1.33 multiplied by sine theta, which is the angle of refraction, which we don't know. And let's make sine theta as a subject. So you will have sine 46 divided by 1.33. And when you put these numbers on your calculator, you get 0 0.54 and sine inverse of 0 0.54 will give you 32.68 degrees approximately. So when the angle of incidence in air is 46 degrees, the angle of refraction in water is 32.68 degrees. And this is how we solve this question. Now let's look at the second case. In the second case, what happened was the light was traveling from water to air. So obviously it is going to bend away from the normal. So here the first medium is water. As you see here, the first medium is water and the second medium is air. So the refractive index of air is one. The refractive index of water is 1.33. Light is incident at an angle of incidence 46 degrees. And we don't know what is the angle of refraction. And we are trying to calculate what is the angle of refraction. So again, we are going to use Snell's law, which states that the refractive index of the first medium, which is the refractive index of water, multiplied by the sine of angle of incidence, multiplied by the sine of angle of incidence, which is sine 46, is equal to the refractive index of the second medium, which is one, because the, our second medium is air in this case, multiplied by sine theta, and that's the angle of refraction, which we don't know. So once we have written this equation, all you're supposed to do is just solve it. So you get sine theta, when you multiply 1.33 with sine 46, you get 0.9567. And theta would be sine inverse of 0.9567, which will give you approximately 73.8 degrees. So this is how we solve this question. Let's go back to the slide now. So we have solved this question. Now you see, you are given this uh, table of refractive indices. So you see uh, 
when you are talking about air, the refractive index is one. The, when you are uh, talking about water, the refractive index is 1.33. If you look here, the diamond has the highest refractive index, which is 2.42. And that is the reason why diamond shines brilliantly. We'll talk about that when we discuss critical angle, but one of the reasons why diamond shines brilliantly is because it has a very high refractive index. And when light enters inside the diamond, the light undergoes multiple total internal reflection. But we'll cover total internal re reflection in the other slide. Uh, here, you just need to know what are the ref refractive indices of uh, different substances. Uh, and diamond has the highest refractive index. Now, again, I have another question for you. And we need to calculate what is the refractive index of the glass sample. So here you see light is entering at an angle 40 degree and it exits, it uh, enters inside the glass at an angle 36 degrees. So the angle of incidence is 40 and the angle of refraction is 36. And you are asked to calculate what is the index of refraction of glass. Again, you can use Snell's law, which states that refractive index of medium one multiplied by the sine of angle of incidence will be equal to the refractive index of medium two multiplied by sine of angle of refraction. Here we know the refractive index of air. So you could say one times sine 40. So this is Snell's law and one times sine theta one. And one is the refractive index of first medium multiplied by sine theta one, which is the angle of incidence sine of angle of incidence is equal to N2, which is the second medium refractive index, multiplied by sine of angle of refraction. We know here N1, we know here theta one, we don't know uh, N2 and we know theta two. So just sub in the values. So when you sub in the values, you get N1 is one, theta one is 40, N2 is uh, the unknown that we are looking for and theta two is 36 and just solve this equation and you will get approximately the refractive index of this medium as 1.1. And remember, refractive index is a ratio, so it does not have a unit. Now, the second part of the question is, calculate the speed of the light when it travels from one medium to another. So what is the speed of the light in the glass sample? So you are asked to calculate what is the speed of the light when it enters inside the glass sample. Now, this is based on a refractive index. And the formula is the refractive index of air multiplied by the speed of light in air will be equal to the refractive index of glass multiplied by the speed of light in glass. Speed of light in air is three times 10 raised to the power eight meters per second. You know that the refractive index of air is one. So, as per Snell's law, refractive index of air, which is one, multiplied by the speed of light in air, which is three times 10 raised to the power eight, will be equal to the refractive index of glass, which is 1.1, multiplied by the speed of light in glass. And you make this equation and solve it, and you should be getting 3.0 times 10 raised to the power eight divided by 1.1, and that will give you approximately 2.7 times 10 raised to the power eight meter per second. The rule is N1 sine theta one is equal to N2 sine theta two. You could write N1 over N2 is sine theta two over sine theta one. And similarly, you could write V2 over V1 is sine theta two over sine theta one. Uh, which is equal to N1 over N2. So you have this equation, N1 over N2 is equal to V2 over V1, which is equal to sine theta two over sine theta one. Uh, let's try to understand this question. The index of refraction of a particular glass slab is 1.65. And what is the speed of light in air? So I'm going to solve this question. Now, 
you see light enters from air. So this is the light that is entering from air inside the glass. We know the speed of light in air, which is three times 10 raised to the power eight meter per second. However, we are we don't know the speed of light in glass and that is what we are looking for. So we are going to use the Snell's law. That is the refractive index of the first medium, which is air, the refractive index of first medium, multiplied by speed of light in the first medium, the multiplied by the speed of light in air, which is three times 10 raised to the power eight, will be equal to the refractive index of the second medium, multiplied by the speed of light in the second medium. If you were to write down, you can say that the refractive index of the first medium multiplied by the speed of light in the first medium is equal to the refractive index of the second medium multiplied by the speed of the light in the second medium. So that's uh, Snell's law. Now, when you sub in, the refractive index of the second medium is 1.65 and the speed of light in glass is what we are missing. We simply solve this equation. So you get three times 10 raised to the power eight divided by 1.65, which is 1.8 times 10 raised to the power eight meters per second. This is how you calculate the speed of the light in glass. And you see, you get the answer 1.8 times 10 raised to the power eight meters per second. Next thing we are going to talk about is total internal reflection. We know that when light travels from a denser to a rarer medium, it bends away from the normal. So let's say here, light is going from a denser to a rarer medium, so it is bending away from the normal. Now, if I increase the angle of incidence, you see the angle of refraction increases. Let's go back here. So this is the angle of Sorry, this is the angle of incidence and this is the angle of refraction. Now, if I'm going to increase the angle of incidence, my angle of refraction increases. If I keep increasing my angle of incidence, stage will come when my angle of refraction will be 90 degrees. This is where you see the angle of incidence, um, the angle of incidence for which the angle of refraction is 90 degrees is actually the critical angle. So what is critical angle? The critical angle is the angle of incidence in the denser medium for which the angle of refraction in the rare medium is 90 degrees. So the critical angle is that angle, is that incident angle at which the angle of refraction is 90 degrees. So you could write down Snell's law here, N1, that's the refractive index of this medium, multiplied by refractive index of the denser medium, multiplied by the sine of the critical angle is equal to the refractive index of the second medium, which is N2 multiplied by sine 90. Now sine 90 is one, so you get just N2. So if you want to calculate what is the critical angle, so theta C, sine theta C would be N2 over N1, or you see sine theta C, that's the sine of the critical angle will be N2 over N1. And in fact, theta C would be sine inverse of N2 over N1. So let's say you have a question here. What is the critical angle if the glass is in air? So technically they are saying is, what will be the critical angle for glass air medium? So when light enters, when light travels from glass to air, what will be the critical angle? So let's try to solve it. So let us see this medium. This medium is the glass and this medium is the air. This entire medium is the air. Now light is entering or light is moving from glass to air. So the light is going like this in the glass and then it is moving to air. Obviously it is going to bend away from the normal. So the angle of incidence for which the angle of refraction is 90 degrees 
is the critical angle and we need to find what is this angle. So let's use Snell's law. You have the refractive index of glass that is 1.52 multiplied by sine theta C, sine of the uh, critical angle is equal to the refractive index in air, which is one times sine 90. And sine 90 is one. So this gives you one times one, which is one. So theta C or theta of the critical angle would be sine inverse of one over 1.52. And when you put this value, uh, when you plug in this value in your calculator, you get 41.1 degrees. So this is how you calculate the critical angle. Again, it's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is just use Snell's law. The second part of the question is to find the critical angle when the light travels from uh, water, uh, light travels from glass to water. So you are supposed to find the first medium here would be the glass and the second medium would be water. And when you calculate, you will, you will get approximately 61 degrees. Now, the last part is what is total internal reflection? Now, when the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle, when the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle, then the light gets reflected back into the same medium. And this phenomena is called total internal reflection. The best thing about total internal reflection is that no amount of energy is lost when light is, when light undergoes total internal reflection. That is why in case of optical fibers, the signal is transmitted via total internal reflection. In the beginning of uh, this video, I had asked a critical thinking question, why diamond signs brilliantly? Well, it is because that diamond you see has a very high refractive index, which is 2.42. And so when light enters inside the diamond, it undergoes multiple total internal reflections before it finally exits. And those multiple total internal reflections is the reason why diamond signs brilliantly. You can think in this way that when light enters inside the diamond, the light somewhat gets trapped inside the diamond. It undergoes multiple total internal reflections. And because of these multiple total internal reflections, diamond signs brilliantly. So this covers what is refraction, what is, uh, what is total internal reflection, what is critical angle, and how to solve numerical problems on Snell's law. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to email me or contact me on YouTube.